There doesn't seem to be much that you can't solve with a few doors and a heavy dose of automation. So welcome back, my fellow duplicants. Today we're going to tame another volcano here using doors and automation. So this is the results of a live stream that we did yesterday right here, where I kind of changed up the question of how do we potentially tame a volcano? So essentially what I was asking here is how do we get the heat out of a volcano and then not really worry about what we're going to use it for? Right. So the main things that I'm working on here is how do we get the heat out of the volcano? How do we get the heat out of the igneous rock in its debris form down here and avoid it ever solidifying into a solid tile that would force us to have to go in there and dig it up? And how do we also make the system safe so that if we aren't using it, right, if we don't have an application for it over here, it doesn't back up and cause all sorts of problems. But as it turns out, we worked together here during the live stream and kind of came up with this door arrangement to automate this system. All right, so here's how this sequence works. We have a pool of magma right up top here. Now, in my example here, I've built this thing about as small as I would ever build it. So my pool is on top of the volcano. However, this could be a much larger pool somewhere else if that's what you want. The important thing here is that we are controlling the flow out of this pool using a mechanized airlock. Um, and this mechanized airlock opens up to allow liquid to flow down on top of a hydro sensor. And that's really important because what we want to do here is we want this magma to cool into its debris form so that we end up with little chunks of igneous rock like this. Otherwise, if it was to cool down in such a way that it could potentially turn into a solid chunk, we would have to dig it up. And we don't want to dig it up for two reasons. One, it's, it requires us to manage a lot more equipment. And the second reason is as we dig that stuff up, we reduce its mass by 50%, which means we're losing out on a lot of energy here. But there's a trick to keeping magma from ever cooling into its solid format. So the key thing that we're doing here is that we are keeping the mass per tile nice and low. So the critical number I think is right around 1,474. Essentially, I'm trying to keep this at less than 1,400. If you keep it less than 1,400, it's always going to cool into an igneous rock. But if I do this number right here, right, we see we got 1,474. I click that over here, that cools into a solid. If we go less than that, let's say 1,470. We click that over there, that cools into debris. So that's what we want to do. That's We have to keep that nice and low. So I set this to 700. You could kind of play around with it a little bit uh, to get about as close as you want, as you dare to having a solid chunk of igneous rock form in here. Using temperature shift plates like this kind of allows you to cool the magma a little bit faster as it's coming into this area and potentially build up a little bit extra igneous rock. So that's what I'm using that for. So we've completed a very important first step here. We have magma in a chamber, and we know that we're going to end up with igneous rock debris rather than a solid chunk once it goes below 1,400 degrees Celsius. So at this point, the temperature here is going from the magma down into the doors and from the doors into a bunch of heat conveyors that I have right now. Again, in this system, it doesn't really matter where that heat is going, whether it's going through heat conveyors, pipes, or you just have some solid tiles here, there, or wherever. It doesn't really matter. All right, so at this point, this thing's just going to wait until this sensor no longer sees that this liquid is here. And then at that point, these two doors open up and the igneous rock drops down. So normally in this situation, we'd end up in kind of a difficult spot. We have igneous rock, however, it's in a vacuum, so it's not conducting with the environment in the background. It's only conducting into this door right down here. So in my previous designs, I kind of used some gas as a, uh, a way to kind of get some of that thermal energy out of the rock a little bit faster. But we've got a real trick here that we can do with the doors. And it's the same sort of thing that I'm doing with my regular clearing doors uh, for my space scanner system. And that is when these doors close, you can see the temperature here, it's at 1469, it's going really, really slow. But when we close that, it's now going to be thermally conducting through these doors and straight into the conveyors that are running behind them. So now we can see that this number is dropping much, much faster. So at this point, we're just cooling down this chunk of igneous rock. And we're going to cool it down to whatever number we set over here on this thermal sensor. So in this case, just to kind of keep things moving along here, I set this to be below 600 degrees Celsius. So here I just have a thermal sensor and with a little bit of liquid behind it, I recommend a little drop of water or something in there, just a small amount. You don't really need a whole lot. And this is just detecting how hot all of this stuff is, right? So the heat goes into here and we say, that's what it is. So at this point, we're just pumping the heat out of that igneous rock right here. So it's going to go and do whatever work it needs to do. In this case, we're running some steam turbines. You could also um, convert crude oil into petroleum. That would work. It's a really good use of your 
of thermal energy because not only do you get power out of it, you also get a lot of polluted water and carbon dioxide. Both of those can be very, very useful. You can even convert slime into dirt, or you can do a combination of all of these. I think that's what I'll try to do. First thing, I'll try to convert crude oil into petroleum, and then once I've captured that heat, I'll take that petroleum and run it through the steam chamber as well, uh, along with the rest of the conveyors here, and then thermally get the, the rest of the energy out as power, and then that will still be, I don't know, roughly about 130 degrees Celsius, so maybe I'll convert that slime into dirt, or whatever else after that, right? You know, you get the idea. Build whatever equipment you want. The main thing is that we can set this temperature right here and wait for it to reach that number. And even if we're not running this, it doesn't matter because nothing is going to allow this to bring in more stuff and it's not going to back up or, or anything like that. This will just overpressure and, and you know, wait until there's a clearing before it runs again. All right, so if we speed this thing along here, we can see that the temperature is dropping down. We're just about ready to run all of these generators. I think I have way too much steam over here. 500 kilograms per tile, yeah. Vacuum out half of that. Yeah, those are running. All right, there we go. We've now reached below 600 degrees Celsius. That could be set to, I don't know, 150 if that's what you want. And now we're going to follow the igneous rock. So it falls down here. And what we do now is we use horizontal doors to convey that out of the system. So that way we don't build up more and more igneous rock in the same exact tile, causing the system to kind of slow down because it can never get quite as hot as it first was able to. So this igneous rock is going to be conveyed from left to right, just like that. And now we have more of it over here. And that is the complete cycle. So you saw as that stuff was moving out, more magma was moving in. So this cycle just repeats itself over and over. So that's pretty much where we left off at the end of the stream yesterday. So a big thanks to everybody that was a part of that, commented and, and dropped in your ideas and thoughts of how we could actually make this thing work. And also a big thanks to Tyran Lannister here, who was working on the automation in the background here. And I was able to drop this straight into my game using the blueprints tool, just like this. And then I ended up just copying the automation just like this and actually dropped it uh, pixel for pixel right on where it needed to go. And it worked the first time. How about that? So for a first time prototype, this thing works absolutely fantastic. However, it is a prototype, so there's still some hidden gremlins. So over the next several hours, I actually kind of refined this design and optimized it so that we can actually implement it in our bases because I want to use this thing multiple times throughout my base, maybe combine a couple of volcanoes together and you know do all sorts of crazy stuff. So, so a couple of the problems that's going on right here is one, we have no way to actually kind of create a vacuum inside of here, so there's no method for installation that was figured out here. And also the automation here is kind of uh, going from the inside to the outside, which causes some heat to transfer to these insulated tiles, therefore bleeding a little bit of heat into the environment. That's something you have to be careful about. Not only that, the temperatures we're dealing with here could potentially melt some forms of insulation. So we wanna make sure that we optimize this as much as possible because it's kind of a critical thing to get right. So while that's version 1.0, I kind of refined it back down to this right here. So if we're talking about the automation, don't really worry about the sequence right now. I'll, I'll run you through that. Plus there's pictures and that'll be in the description below with numbers, so it's, it'll be really easy. Um, but I made sure to keep all of this automation inside of the insulation so that this thing really isn't going to bleed heat, um, you know, ever. Now, if you are in a situation where the volcano it hasn't already kind of heated up the environment around it, you could go ahead and build everything you want around this and not really worry about a vacuum. Now, normally you would just use a pump like that, but you run the risk of uncovering the volcano and then it erupting its magma before the volcano has time to pull a vacuum because that can take like a dozen cycles or so. It can take a good long time. Um, so that's why I kind of put these three doors right here. So these doors, and work to eat all of the gas inside of there, the, the door destroyers. So if we were to go ahead and paint some oxygen or something up here, uh, let's say a little bit of polluted oxygen, nice. A little bit of oxygen. Uh, let's throw in some carbon dioxide. A good mix of gas. What this little arrangement here does is that it keeps opening up a space down here and then it compresses gas into a spot where it has nowhere to go. And that last door destroys all of the gas that finds its way in there. It's a door destroyer. We've used a similar arrangement here to destroy critters and do all sorts of things like uh, destroy regolith and move it and convey it. Doors are super useful that way. 
So this system right here is really good at creating a vacuum and you can build it like this way. So if you have something above it or you can build it top down or left to right, wherever you want it, it's really, really quite simple. The automation for it is really not that bad. Um, again, we'll have pictures and numbers for that, but this one here is 15, that's five, that's three, that's three, and you can turn this thing off if you just want to stop running these doors because you've already pulled a vacuum. Really, really handy, and the advantage here is that this thing can survive temperatures up to like 3,000 degrees, depending on what materials you use. Iron, 1,500 degrees. If you make these doors out of steel, that number is 2,400 degrees Celsius. And that is way, way higher than even our best gas pump, which is made of thermium, which is, you know, space age material stuff. The maximum temperature that thing can be subjected to is 975 degrees Celsius, which is a fair bit lower than what we can possibly see coming out of the magma, um, out of this volcano in the form of magma. That's 1,700 degrees Celsius. So you have to be careful there. But if you set up these doors right here, you can get rid of any gas that you have inside of here. It takes about a dozen cycles or so to kind of eat through all the gas and it's not a big deal. I've tested it several times on this unit right here. Uh, in the situation where let's say you uncover this, but it erupts, let's say five cycles or so, and you still have some oxygen inside of there. The mesh tiles will heat up and then they will start to heat up the insulated tiles that are around them. So this one here is quite hot. However, this being insulated is not really a big deal because, you know, it's still insulated and the environment around it really isn't going to get that hot unless you're really dealing with a critical area and you want to keep that protected. And in that situation, what you're going to do is just go ahead and, you know, create this, uh, create an extra wall right there, just double layered up. At that point, you don't have to worry about the heat getting out. If you can avoid building this thing in a vacuum, then I think it's really easy to build. I'll have a blueprint. You can just paste it down here. Obviously, the things you're going to want to build first is there stuff that you can't get to, like these doors right there. For the rest of it, just build your ladders and, you know, whatever you need to do. Uh, the other thing here is you have a bottle emptier to drop your little drop of water down here on the thermal sensor and then just wall that in. As far as the automation for what's going on inside of here, when dealing with a magma volcano, I set this to below 500 kilograms right there. You can kind of play around with it if you want it to go a little bit higher, potentially as high as 800. The reason I went with 500 is because not all volcanoes are created equal, and some of them really don't put out a lot of liquid uh, very, very quickly. So there's a good chance that it can fall over here and start to turn to igneous rock uh, before you build up to the amount that is over here. So 500 seemed to be a safe number. It's not a big deal. You can just cycle this stuff and then change the number if you need to, and it'll clear the material out. Low number is all of your choice, but I'm using 250 here just to kind of keep things moving and generate lots of power. Talking about other volcanoes here, such as the copper volcano, the gold volcano, or even the iron volcano down here, all of these are going to operate uh, with the sensor being at 250 kilograms. The reason to keep that a little bit lower is because all of these metals here will actually condense into a solid tile rather than a piece of debris at a lower mass. But again, just to kind of avoid the situation where it's constantly turning into debris right there, I set that number just a little bit lower. And because this is a big automated system and the less you put in, the faster this thing's just going to run, it really doesn't matter that much. Like there isn't a ton of reason to get as much debris as you can up here um, because it's just going to cycle faster to make up for the amount of energy you're removing it from it. But yeah, as you can see right here, this exact same method works with copper. It also works with gold. You don't get a ton of energy out of gold because it unfortunately just doesn't have uh, anywhere near the mat energy because its specific heat capacity is so low. And you can see right there, that's why how quickly that turned into a solid. So you can see why I set that as low as I did. But this here just runs, I put the output temperature to right around 150 degrees Celsius. I have gone as low as 140. The steam turbine slows down quite a bit once you get to 140. Now, when we are looking at these refined metals here, we would want to sweep this stuff out. So what I'd actually do is just create another module down here. You know, maybe it's a couple deep like that, right? Get rid of these two tiles right there. Just put a little bit of crude oil down there. Doesn't need to be a whole lot. What that's going to do is allow the heat from here to kind of maintain the temperature of this crude oil. Right, so if, it's, if the crude oil is hotter than the copper, the copper will cool it back down. And then make this out of steel, so you have an auto sweeper and a loader. And then this here will 
maintain its temperature and it won't overheat even though it's in a vacuum environment uh, because the liquid is maintaining the temperature there so then you can ship this out and do whatever you want to do with it you know run it through here cool it down or run it through a cooler and make it even colder one thought here is we have an aqua tuner and this thing's already maintaining the temperature of the steam turbines so if you make this environment nice and cold up there you know maybe just ship it up there and cool it down so there's some ideas for you yeah so here we go if we just wanted to ship this stuff out we can see that the copper is right there we load it up and we can just ship it out right there this is also a good spot to kind of control our vacuum as well so we can just run that until we don't need to anymore and then just disable it sweet another important thing that i'm doing here is i'm using a bridge to jump over this insulated tile that way i don't end up heating up that chunk of tile so that's kind of how you can avoid that thermal conductivity that would otherwise happen right there this here is in a vacuum you can do that in, in many different ways you can obviously just build this really really close by and use a door or something like that if that's what you want to do but in my arrangement this is probably going to be in space so that's kind of what i'm simulating here the only automation you have to worry about inside of here is to set this filter gate to four seconds and that filter gate to one second those are the two most important things everything down here is all default five seconds uh, same with that one right there not a big deal as far as the materials to build everything inside of here you can actually build this entire thing pre-steel if you want to um, because the materials that i'm using here for airflow are wolframite and the materials are for the filter gate are made of tungsten However, if you have steel, you could probably just go ahead and use steel. Steel does have an advantage when we're dealing with the me mechanized airlocks. It uh, has a higher thermal capacity and also has a higher thermal conductivity as compared to the Wolframite doors. But if you can tap into a volcano before you have steel, that would be pretty impressive. So there you have it. I hope you find this nice and useful. If you've got some ideas for me, go ahead and leave them down there in the comment section below. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm definitely going to put this to use many times in my base, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.